Shalom from Israel. I'm Shira Sokoram, and I want to welcome you to Israel Frontline, your guide to Israel and the Middle East. We want to give you information you will probably not hear in the mainstream media regarding life in Israel and the Israeli-Arab conflict. And we'll add a biblical perspective to our reality. Today, we will begin a three-episode series on the subject that I believe is one of the most important issues the world is facing right now. In order to fight the enemy, you need to know who it is. And so today, we will talk about why Hamas is just like ISIS, which is also called the Islamic State, and ISIS is just like Hamas. On our program today, how ISIS and Hamas are similar. Where did Hamas come from? The UN and Hamas. Finally, our panel will give you the Israeli perspective to our questions on this issue. Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, stood beside the United Nations Secretary General, Ban Ki-moon, and declared, Hamas is like ISIS. Hamas is like Al-Qaeda. Hamas is like Hezbollah. Hamas is like Boko Haram. The most significant element of this statement is the fact that Netanyahu is the only world leader who has dared to point out this obvious truth. Strategically, ISIS has an uncompromising ideology and a goal to die for. It is the same ideology and belief system as that of Hamas. Upon examination of both ISIS and Hamas, their beginnings, their goals, and methods, I believe you will ultimately reach the logical conclusion that Hamas, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Hezbollah, and the rest of them are all part of the same global force that plans to conquer the world. Let's identify ISIS. Not long ago, ISIS was far smaller in numbers than Hamas, and so its range of operations matched its limited strength. Now that it has grown exponentially, so have its aspirations. The original name was Al-Qaeda Iraq. Then it became ISIS, Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. And soon after it became ISIL, Islamic State of Iraq and Levant, which includes all of the Eastern Mediterranean. And now they call themselves the Islamic State, meaning their goal is the entire world. As its size grew, so did its vision. It was only in 2011 when American troops left a vacuum in Iraq that its new leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, took advantage of the Sunni's feeling of resentment against the Iraqi Shiite-dominated government. Baghdadi's vision was and is to take over all Arab nations as a start. Hamas's vision is to take over all of Palestine quote, unquote, the Holy Land from the Mediterranean to the Jordan River, for now. The biblical Holy Land also includes parts of Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, and Sinai. However, Hamas is concentrating first on conquering what they call the occupied territories, that is, the area of the Holy Land where the Jewish people now live. Though both terrorist groups are Sunnis, ISIS and Hamas dislike each other. Hamas likes to portray itself as a victim of Israeli aggression and usually hides its terrorist acts from its cameras, while ISIS glorifies its terrorism with gory video clips and pictures. Moreover, both have the same goal to conquer and control the Holy Land. A good book can make a real difference in a believer's life. The goal of Maoz Hebrew Books Division is to bring great faith books to Israeli readers in their language. We choose books by authors like Joyce Meyer, Jack Hayford, and more, which strengthen the walk of faith of a believer. We translate, 
edit, typeset, and print these books in Hebrew, and then make them available in congregations across Israel. Where did Hamas come from? Hamas is an offspring of the jihadist Muslim Brotherhood. And no one can say that the Brotherhood doesn't have global aspirations for a Sharia-governed caliphate. It has over 2,000 branches throughout the world, including in Western countries. The only reason Hamas is not also spreading like a cancer across the Middle East, as is ISIS, is because of Israel's powerful army and the Jewish people's will to survive. Israel knows it cannot leave a vacuum or grow lethargic or Hamas would metastasize in every nook and corner of Israel. For this reason, there are no free and open border crossings from Gaza into Israel. Even though the nations howl, Israel has not allowed an airport or a seaport in Gaza for the simple reason they would be used to ship in weapons to destroy the Jewish state. Israel believes what Hamas publicly declares, that Hamas's goal is to kill every single Jew in the world. You may simply Google Hamas charter. The immediate goal of ISIS is to wipe out the Christians of Syria and Iraq plus minorities like the Yazidi people by either converting them to Islam or killing them. This is a call for genocide. ISIS and Hamas agree on one major point. Right now, both groups are trying to eliminate an entire people group. The actions of the United Nations demonstrate that they deeply sympathize with the aspirations of Hamas and are working night and day to isolate Israel, threatening to destroy her economy through boycotts, convict her leaders of war crimes, and cut off weapon deliveries to the tiny state. During the 50-day war with Gaza, UN boss Ban Ki-moon arrived in Israel to experience for himself some of the 4,565 Hamas rockets exploding throughout Israel, but had little to say about Israel's so-called inconvenience. It was like, what's the problem? Don't you have the Iron Dome? Actually, he did have extremely tough language, not for Hamas, but for Israel. He called Israel's action to protect herself from Hamas's acts of war a moral outrage, a criminal act, reprehensible, and a gross violation of international law. Ban Ki-moon never used such language for even the likes of Syrian President Bashar Assad when he gassed 1,700 of his own people with chemical weapons. Actually, the UN leader has never used that kind of language to describe any other nation, organization, or person. Not Iran, not ISIS, not Putin, who is busy conquering parts of the Ukraine and killing several thousand citizens. Ban Ki-moon has harsh and condemning language solely for Israel. In fact, most of the world's leaders claim outrage against Israel, not against Hamas. Cries of war crimes against Israel are already abounding. So what did they want Israel's prime minister to do? Ban Ki-moon demanded that Mr. Netanyahu sit down with Hamas and negotiate a peace agreement. Well, that seems like a reasonable idea. Or does it? Why doesn't he ask Iraq to work out a peace agreement with ISIS? Or perhaps America should be negotiating a settlement with Al-Qaeda? Did Ban Ki-moon urge Nigeria? to meet halfway with Boko Haram terrorists who burn down churches and the Christians in them and kidnap hundreds of young girls, forcing them to convert to Islam and then selling them as sex slaves? Then why do the United Nations and even most Western countries insist that Israel stop fighting and start talking with Hamas terrorists? 
These world leaders say if Israel would only give the Palestinians hope for a better life, then perhaps they would make peace with Israel. These same leaders ignore all the reasons that this won't happen. To name one, the UN and the Western countries have already given the Palestinians billions and billions of dollars with which they could have built a Middle Eastern Singapore. Until today, the UN feeds them and the Hamas leaders have become lavishly wealthy. Unfortunately, instead of building neighborhoods and businesses and infrastructure, Hamas leaders steal the money both to line their own pockets and to create the largest business in Gaza, constructing attack tunnels and building weapons to destroy Israel. The fact is, there are many similarities between all Islamic terrorist groups. Their fundamental Islamic religion drives them to seek to conquer the world, ultimately to force all human beings to convert to Islam and accept Sharia law as their way of life and to destroy whoever disagrees with them. Their intentions are clear and their goals are unchangeable. Islam seeks the destruction of Israel, but Israel will not be destroyed again. Great forces of evil are gathering around this little piece of land God chose to give to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob some 4,000 years ago as an everlasting possession. This growing evil power will gather all nations against Israel in a battle never before known to mankind. Nevertheless, Israel will be victorious, not because our Jewish people deserve it, but because God promised it. In one of the Psalms, the writer cried out to God, for behold, your enemies make a tumult. They have said, come let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be remembered no more, for they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. But God has promised to protect Israel physically and to bring spiritual salvation to her people. The prophet Joel foretold, but Judah will abide forever and Jerusalem from generation to generation, for the Lord dwells in Zion. Maos Israel Ministries is a Messianic Jewish nonprofit organization based in Tel Aviv. We exist to be a witness of the good news to the people of Israel through outreach, discipleship, and raising up godly leaders. We translate and publish outstanding faith books in Hebrew and powerful testimony books to reach non-believers. We have a Hebrew outreach website with original media content produced by our team. We support the Hebrew-speaking congregation Tiferet Yeshua in Tel Aviv. We sponsor and host seminars and conferences. We support our Arab Christian brothers who love Israel and the God of Israel. Our I Stand With Israel Fund serves as a benevolence outreach, meeting the practical needs of Israeli believers our dream is to see God's promises fulfilled until the day when all Israel will be saved. Today, joining me in the studio is Mati Shoshani from it's Jerusalem and Shani Ferguson from Jerusalem also. Thank you for having and me. And Israel Pachter from Ashdod. Shalom. We shall start with our questions. The Western world has been appalled by ISIS public execution of innocent people. But we know that executions like this are happening every day in the Muslim countries. Why do you think the West is so surprised and shocked, Mati? What is it that has changed when they saw these pictures of, be, of people behead, being beheaded? Yes. One, of course, watching someone being beheaded is appalling, period. Right. But something else is, is playing behind the scenes is that people in the West don't follow news from the Middle East, on the, you know, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. um, generally speaking, people are executed in the Middle East. It's not something new. Iran executes people. Iraq has executed people. Different terrorist organizations kill each yes. other. Even within Israel or the land of, of Israel, you would call, 
uh, in, the, in the Gaza Strip, in the West Bank. They're killing each other. It's not something new to the region. What's new is that it's Westerners being killed by extremist Muslims, and it seems gruesome. There's a message, there's a threat uh, within the, uh, the videos, but it's important to state that this has been going on for a while. Uh, the difference yes. is, of course, that they're making it public. They're using it as leverage against the West. Uh, so just to put it in perspective, this isn't the first time people are being executed, not right. this, year, this year, not this month even. I mean, it's just, it's constantly right. happening. You know, I've noticed when I'm in the States, if I'm in a place like Kansas or some place like that, it's so far away from the Middle East. It's not like here in, in Israel, everybody follows the news every day. We know where Turkey is, we know where Afghanistan is, we know where every place is. And many times people barely know where Israel is. So I really think that it's just far away. Well, there, there really is so much happening in this region. It'd almost be impossible to follow everything that's happening. Right. If, if you if you follow it from the West, you could say, oh, you know, Israel, the, the Israelis and the Palestinians are at it again. But in reality, there's war going on in every country, practically around us, constantly. Very large numbers of casualties. Exactly. Many parties that are involved. It just gets tiring. You don't want to watch it, or people don't want to watch it every day. I think Americans really forget. Um, Westerners forget that ten years ago they were executing journalists. It's it's, you know, if, if you have young people in, in high school and college today that don't know who Osama bin Laden is when he's captured and don't know, you know, when the anniversary of 9-11 is, uh, in the same way, the culture is busy with the latest reality show and right. the latest pop yeah. star and scandal and whatever, and they forgot yeah. that, you know, 10, 15 yes. years ago, Daniel Pearl was also uh, beheaded. And, and so it's right. like the sudden shock of yes. like, oh, we, this has never happened before. And it really has. Right. I think there's, there's something else that is, it's some of the, the naivety of the West, where a lot of people see this, and what's shocking about these videos is that they're purely evil. Yeah. Uh, I'll explain what I'm saying. Oftentimes they try to rationalize what they're saying. Oh, they're killing them because of this, or the war is happening because of that. Mm -hmm. Here there's no question that they're doing this out of pure evil, and it just doesn't align right. with what the West believes about Islam, about mm -hmm. uh, you know what's going on in the right. Middle East. Right. Well, Israel, while ISIS is broadcasting their executions publicly, Hamas more or less tries to hide their executions and so on. Now, which way do you think is more successful for their organizations, ISIS or uh, Hamas? Uh, I think right now we can see ISIS is raising, and uh, you know one of the reasons, they have plenty of lands and plenty of uh, victims and people around them. Yes. Uh, but in long term, I think Hamas is more successful. You see, the, what ISIS is doing, and it's pretty successful in their region, they are uh, spreading fear. Like, mm -hmm. one of my questions was watching these uh, 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 bloody pictures uh, and victims and uh, Western victims. I thought, why are they doing that? And actually, my Arab brothers or friends, they uh, uh, helped me to explain. And they said, you know, they're working based on fear because they know fear have great power. And actually, as a result of that, we know a know number of stories. When ISIS come closer to the other armies who are stronger than there, but they're just running. They just feel yeah. the fear. So right now, it looks like they're very successful. Right. But again, I think Hamas, uh, Tactics, it's, it's very successful yes. because they have all the support. We've been speaking about, about that in the first program. They have uh, supporters. They have uh, time. They're taking their time. So I think right. they're more successful. Let me, let me just comment on the, the word success. Mm. I mean, these are terrorist organizations. Mm -hmm. What is allowing them to, to be successful is the circumstances around them. They're not an organized army or government. The reason ISIS is successful is because they're operating in a somewhat of a vacuum in the area. There, right. is no, there are no governments. Yes. The Iraqi government has been collapsed following the American invasion, and obviously the history that uh, superseded that. Mm -hmm. Syria, same thing. Several years, three years of, uh, of civil war allowed these militants to enter the country without anyone disturbing them. They can't make it into Israel. They haven't made it into Jordan, although they're trying. They're not in Egypt, so they, yeah. they're limited to the areas that have you know chaos, essentially. I think the other thing is, that Hamas is getting its money from the West, from the United Nations, from the Western countries, whether they uh, want to believe it or not, they are, that's where they're getting their money. Whereas ISIS is not getting money, basically, from the United Nations. And so they can be more bold. 
Uh, they're getting it from oil and from stuff they have stolen over there. So. And they're funded by Muslim countries. Yes, exactly. I think also okay. ISIS is growing in numbers and attracting young people from Western countries yeah. or Westernized countries yeah. because they are black and white. Hamas, so sometimes, no, we're really, no, we're not, we're fighting for this, no, mm -hmm. we're really good people. ISIS, they're like, this is what we stand for, we yeah. want to take over the world and, and you right. can join us, you can be a part of the revolution. And, and it's so clear cut and that is so refreshing in a sick sort of way right. that um, kids that are just so uh, tired of the politically correct and you know, whatever, as morbid as it is, that's, that's what they're leaning towards. Right, right. Mati, we often hear that Israel is losing the PR war. The United Nations is mainly made up of a majority of Arabs and their allies. So it's not surprising that Israel ends up being the scapegoat most of the time. So is there a way that Israel can fight this isolation? What can we do? Let's first answer the question of who the UN is. And I'll, I'll state, because many people don't know this, the UN isn't a democratic, or it is a democratic organization. The majority of the participants in it are non-democratic states. Dictators, and, most of yes, them, many of them. Dictatorships or var variants yes. of, the, of yes. that. And Israel isn't the only country that's isolated in, within the UN. Also, America is isolated within the UN. And what people don't understand, this is not a government. They don't have the same executive power that a government has. Mm -hmm. They meet together and they say things that most of the time don't have much clout in the real world. Right. They'll say, we condemn Israel, we condemn America, we condemn this, we condemn that. It's a security council that makes a difference. And that's where having big friends is helpful. So the United States is a good ally of, of Israel. They're part of the Security Council, so they can uh, overrule or veto, basically, any decision that has any real meaning mm -hmm. against the State of Israel. Are we going to change the balance of powers in the UN? Probably not. No. Uh, this is not a problem that only Israel suffers mm -hmm. from. Many countries suffer from it. And I'll just say, we're talking about PR, mm -hmm. here's a big problem that Israel faces. When people hear the UN Human, uh, human Rights Council, they imagine that this organization deals with human rights. Right. It, would, it would stand to logic that this is what they do. That's, mm -hmm. It couldn't be any farther from truth. So, there, I mean, you need to go and research this. If you don't know about this, I, yes. I know you do. Uh, you need to just go and like, find out more about this. But a lot yeah. of the things that seem like these simplistic, oh, yes. they were condemned by the UN. So what? The, UN, the UN is mostly dictators. So what if they're condemning us? Mm -hmm. So we need to put it in proportion. Right. You know, when our friends start speaking badly about, uh, against yeah. us, yeah. that's when we really need to question what we're doing. Right, right. Israel, you originally came from the former Soviet Union. How is Russia in all of this? What does Russia, the Russian people and the leadership think about uh, Israel and Hamas and uh, the conflict that we have? Well, there's always difference between people and the government and uh, the government stand or public proclamation. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, uh, you know, Lots of Russians have different friends, relatives, people they know in yes. Israel. Mm -hmm. And lately, the borders between Russia and Israel are widely open. They have no visa. They just can buy ticket at any time mm -hmm. and come here. And I want to re remind our American viewers that Russia is very close to Israel. Yes. Uh, the closest point from here to Russia, it's actually less than two hours uh, flying. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. very close. It's almost by the borders. Now. Uh, People are, most of the people, they do understand the situation. Mm -hmm. They have their own problems in some right. regions, uh, the same kind of problems with right. the radical Islam. Right. And they have also, they have yes. their yep. war. Yep. Uh, but the government, you see, uh, right now, we live in a very interesting time when things are changing yes. constantly, always. Right. Right. And you know, I don't want to speak about Russian politics, but you know, the sanctions, you know, the, yes. right, the situation right. there. And actually, it's a force in Russia to stand uh, boldly against Israel, uh, just automatically, because Israel is working with the West and America. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty difficult situation. However, I can remember uh, not long ago, I visited Russia, and I had to show my Israeli passport and not my American passport, because I wouldn't have gotten in with the American passport without a visa. Shani, I want to ask you, you know, the UN head, Ban Ki-moon, and many world leaders visited Israel during the last war. And some of them even experienced the sirens and the people, including themselves, running for shelter. And still, these leaders of the United Nations accuse Israel of war crimes. 
Can you explain that? And maybe you can uh, also bring in the spiritual side because there is something to that that doesn't make sense. Why Israel is the aggressor and not a terrorist organization. Well, I think coming into our latest round of violence, you have to realize that most of these people, that most of these leaders that are coming have already bought into the idea that Israel is somehow living in an unjust existence. So it, it doesn't even matter if they nuke us. Right. We are the aggressors because we're here, because we're breathing air that should be Palestinian air, and we're you know swimming on beaches that should be populated by Arabs. So no matter what happens, it, it, everyone's trying to look at the situation and saying, can't you see, can't you see, it's obvious. Well, yes, it's obvious, but we shouldn't be here in the first place. So that's one. The spiritual side, I would say, is that really Israel represents God to a lot of people, even if they don't believe in God or want God or... Um, are interested in in what right he is he mm -hmm. still represents like they the fact that they exist after thousands and thousands of years is because god made them exist and that's offensive right. to people right well i think that's all the time we have today thank you mati and shani and israel we'll see you next week thank you the ma'oz israel report the magazine you've loved for years is now easier to read than ever Introducing the Ma'oz Israel Report app for iPad. All the same great articles you get in the print edition, plus video reports and exclusive bonus photos you won't find anywhere else. There are also archived editions and translations into eight languages. You can even connect with Ma'oz Israel on Facebook and Twitter, or make a donation to the ministry, all right on your iPad. Best of all, it's free. To download, Go to Apple's App Store and search Ma'oz Israel. The Ma'oz Israel Report app for iPad, putting Israel right at your fingertips. That concludes today's episode of Israel Frontline. Thank you for watching. For more analysis of Israel's struggles and the spiritual implications, sign up for the free Ma'oz Israel Report at maozisrael.org slash sign up. Please join us next week for another episode of Israel Frontline. On behalf of our team and myself, Shalom from Tel Aviv.